Welcome to Whisperwood Stories. Today we read two stories from r slash no sleep. Let's begin. Our first story is from Jay Baked. My wife heard a skinwalker in our house last night. Let me start off by saying that my wife doesn't believe in paranormal entities or anything of that nature. We have three cats, and one of them likes to be a rebel, jumping onto counters and meowing at the top of his lungs just looking for attention. He does this throughout the night, and it's a regular occurrence. Last night, after a few beers and video games, I decided it was time to head to bed with my wife. When I woke up this morning, my wife was basically attached to me with wide eyes and a nervous look on her face. I asked her what was wrong and she proceeded to tell me what happened last night. She said that around 2.50 in the morning, she was woken up to a noise that sounded like one of our cats downstairs, meowing unusually loud. After giving herself a few seconds to perk up and fully pay attention, she said that the meows sounded more like a person trying to mimic a cat, and it kept saying, hello. After meowing for two or three minutes, a loud bang came at the door, and then a notification went off for a motion sensor at our front door. When she told me this, I checked my phone and sure enough, there was a notification for motion detected at 2.52 a.m. I asked her why she didn't wake me up so I could grab my gun. She said she was frozen with fear and didn't want it to hear her make a noise. We're out running errands while I'm typing this, but something made me uncomfortable about her story. Last night, I set the home security alarm around 9 p.m., and we didn't turn it off until we walked the donk this morning. To make things worse, we had slept with all of the animals in our room, and the door was closed. So whatever was in our house or outside the front door was not one of our animals. Obviously, the first thing that came to mind was a skinwalker. But maybe I'm just being paranoid. I checked all of the rooms in the house after I got up. I'm not sure what I could have done anyways. It's very odd that my wife was scared so badly by something she doesn't necessarily believe in. We bought this house brand new, so no one has lived here before. When I'm home alone, I do feel like I'm being watched or someone's always walking directly behind me. My wife also said that the house has given her chills ever since we moved in. Something is just off about it. We just got home, and I went to hang up one of my shirts in the master bedroom closet when I noticed that the board that covers the attic access has been shifted a little. When I asked my wife about it, she said that she's never been up there, and the builders would have placed it back in its original place before we made the purchase. I'm genuinely anxious just thinking about what could be going on. Has anyone ever had an experience like this? Or similar, at least. We're going to my mother-in-law's to get some sage. My wife said burning it should keep whatever's around the house away. Update coming soon. Our last story is from Dreshino. The monster under your bed is there for a reason. It was always there for as long as I can remember. Even when I was a small baby, I think I saw it hiding beneath my cradle. I can't be sure about that, of course. 
given the earliest thing that I can remember was when I was four. I remember seeing a dark shadow open my window and crawl inside before sliding beneath my bed. The sight completely terrified me, of course. I couldn't even muster the courage to get out of bed. I couldn't even find my voice to call out to my parents. I just huddled beneath the sheets, fully aware that there was something below where I was sleeping. When I woke up the next morning and managed to steel myself enough to take a look, there was nothing there. I told my parents, but as you'd expect, they chalked it up to my imagination. This didn't occur all the time, mind you. Weeks or even months could pass by where nothing would happen. Though I was always too scared to actually try and peek beneath the bed whenever it did. Our house was near the woods, which was otherwise really fun. But it made me occasionally wonder just what it was that was doing this. Was there some strange lizard or forest man hiding out in the woods? I could only assume it was where that thing came from, given that it was the direction the window in my bedroom faced. Now many of you might be wondering as to why I simply didn't lock my window shut. Well, at the time I was too young to figure out how to do it, and when I finally did get the hang of it, I would almost always find that one of my parents had undone the lock at one point to let some fresh air and sunlight in. And the truth be told, my room did get uncomfortably hot in the summers, and there would be periods when that monster didn't visit me at all, to the point where even I began to doubt myself as to whether or not this thing existed at all. Fast forward a couple of years later, when I was ten, and I had thought that I had grown out of my silly childhood fantasies of monsters. I had left the window open and nearly nodded off when I heard a strange sound. To my utmost horror, the window began opening. The lights were off, so I couldn't even make out what it was that came in, but it slid underneath my bed. Mind you, about two years had passed since the last time I saw this thing, so I had chalked it up to a nightmare by that point. Now, I was wide awake and upright in my bed, unsure of what I should do. Should I run? What if the monster grabbed my feet? Should I shout then? Before I could raise my voice, I felt a sudden chill under my bedroom. It was as if I had just walked into an open freezer. Against the moonlight, I saw another shadow approach my window. If I had been scared before, I was nearly petrified now. I didn't know what that shadow was but every fiber of my being was screaming at me to run. Only, I couldn't find it in me to even move. It was then that I heard a voice. Daniel, come and hide. It was a strange, raspy voice. It didn't even sound like something a human could make. I screamed as I felt something touching my leg. I looked down to see that the monster beneath my bed had extended a hand to grab onto me. As you can understand, I was completely startled. This had been one of my worst fears after all, but the hand didn't pull me underneath as I expected. Instead, I just heard the same voice again. Quick, hide. I saw the shadow against my window now nearly blot out any incoming light completely, and the fact that the monster under my bed had grabbed my leg had snapped me out of my stupor. While I didn't like the monster under my bed, I didn't like whatever was outside even more. I crawled underneath the bed and the monster surprisingly made room for me. It whispered. My heart pounded loudly as I heard multiple feet hit the floor of my bedroom. Now, the cold was nearly unbearable and I began to shiver uncontrollably. But even then, I didn't dare to go out and look at whatever else had just followed the monster underneath my bed. I could even hear its hard, deep breathing as its feet began moving across the floor. By my count, did it have six? Or eight legs? Regardless, I don't think that I'd ever been as scared before in my life as I was in that moment. 
For what seemed like an eternity, I lay there, underneath my bed, no longer even caring about the monster beside me. Eventually, the pressure relented and the temperature went back to normal. It was only when the monster beside me decided to crawl out and nothing happened that I did too. I was safe, for now. I never got a good look at whatever it had been that was hiding under my bed as it crawled out of the window and into the woods. Needless to say, I didn't get any sleep that night. I ran into my parents' bedroom and whined until they let me sleep with them. It's been some years since that incident, and nothing of the sort has happened again. As I've grown, though, I've begun to appreciate certain things. Namely, the fact that that thing knew my name, and that it looked out for me in that moment. Something I heard once now sticks out to me. That there is always bigger fish. There may be lots of monsters in the woods near my house, and some of them are worse than others. One is frightening enough to chase another one of them to hide under my bed. There seems to be a food chain, even amongst monsters. I keep my window open now whenever possible. I'm not too scared of what comes to hide under my bed, though I'm still terrified of whatever chased it to hide there. But given that the monster under my bed did help me out, I feel like I now owe him one. And if I ever encounter that other terrifying creature, I'll at least know when I should crawl underneath the bed. So remember that when you think about the monster under your bed. It might be there for a good reason after all, and it might be worse for you if it weren't there. Thank you for listening to Whisperwood Stories. If you enjoyed, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe down below. Do you have a story that you'd like me to read here? Consider commenting or sending it to whisperwoodsubmissions at gmail.com. The stories in this video were read and may have been slightly altered with the author's permissions. And be sure to check out the original Reddit posts. Don't let the shadows get too close.